That's Scotty Morrison. And this is Inga Mbing. Inga is from the Taiyao tribe, one of 16 tribes currently recognised by the Taiwanese government. Inga defied the taboo against women singing traditional wayata. Now she's celebrated for helping keep her language alive. Taiwan, the computer chip kingdom of the world, powering up most of the planet's phones, laptops, watches and game consoles. A fascinating island of incredible urban architecture, jaw-dropping landscapes, complicated history and complex politics. Meet Professor Yolan Shia, who was in Auckland recently. What do people watching this need to know about Taiwan? We have many different indigenous nations in Taiwan. So we have a lot of uh, things that is similar to each other, Maori and indigenous Taiwan people. I takea mai te iwi Maori i Taiwan. Taiwan may could be the homeland of the uh, Maori people. It is possible. Yes, we are far now, of course. <laughs> they think that your original ancestor from Taiwan we, we kind of think that it's pretty much probably true because we share similar um, vocabulary. In our language, ears means zangila. Oh, tari, taringa. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's very similar. And then yes. we are from Australian language family. Mm. Um, we Polynesian all, link. Right, that means we all love Kai. We love to sing. Mm -hmm. We love you know, joke about each other, even though it was a lot of difficulty um, facing um, in the mainstream society, um, being discriminated, but we're still trying to head up and then look the bright side to fight for our rights. This queer from the Taiyao tribe was one of the last to receive a moko, or putasin. Under Japanese rule, facial tattoos were banned. The complex politics I mentioned before, a lot to do with colonising powers. Parts of Taiwan were ruled by the Qing dynasty for 200 years. After Japan won a war against China, it took over Taiwan. Then Japan lost in World War II and Taiwan ended back with China. After civil war in China, Mao Zedong and his communist forces declared the mainland the People's Republic of China. The nationalist forces under Kai Kai-shek fled to Taiwan and set up the Republic of China. Call us Yutaka, a former journalist for Taiwan Indigenous Television, describes the impact of the various colonizing powers on her own whanau. Our indigenous names, languages, identities were taken away. My grandparents, even my father's name, were changed three times in their lifetime. Kolas and Yolan each belong to tribes which are proudly matrilineal. Properties, lands and farms belong to daughters. Also, women pick their husbands. After they marry, the man have to move to the woman's family to help her, to help to farm, to fish, to make a living for everyone from the women's family. If the man is too lazy, which is just to put their luggage and then put them outside and then you just go away. I so think I think I like how you roll. Yeah, but <laughs> we also work hard though. Oh, yeah. I remember I look at my grandmom always work outside in the farm work, so hard work. Um, and then my grandfather kind of stay home doing all those good cooking meal yeah. for us. And then I quite to like that. So this whole system was uh, common till my parents' generation. Now it's disappearing because we lost our lands and because of a westernization, urbanization, and signification. Signification means Chinese influence. For almost four decades, Taiwan was under martial law. It was finally lifted in 1987. What was the impact of that on Indigenous communities and leadership? Under martial law, we kind of have been 
not encouraged to participate in political arena. Yeah. And because they see all those people being hanged and then being disappeared and being killed. What did you see around you during that period of martial law? Well, um, when I was turned 18, I tried to have a fabulous dance party for my birthday. Did you? Good on you. And then I got caught by police because that is not allowed. Because we cannot have more than three people to assemble it together. Anyone? Anyone, anyone. Because that can be seen as um, three people together that can be kind of... Plotting. Um, um, they're trying to against the government. Yeah, they, yeah they, 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 they try to, you know, planning something to be in the rebel. And then so that was my first experience of being, you know, in that. So you were arrested for having, trying to have more than three birthday people. Birthday party. Yeah. Just a birthday party. <laughs> 对于过去四百年来，各位承受的苦痛和不公平的待遇。That brought so many different changes. For example, number one is we have an Indigenous Language Act, and that means we can put our Indigenous language as a top priority, so we can do our language revitalization. Now we can have opportunity to have our own Kohana Rio. Um, we even try to set up our own Wananga. But on the other hand, people say they respect our indigenous culture, but we only only do this as a, a tool, as a weapon, to show that Taiwanese culture is different than Chinese culture. We've been put out there to perform our culture and our dance, our song. For but, political reasons. Right, mm. but, but we don't really share the equal power when we ask about our basic right, and then our mainstream people think you guys ask too much. A presidential office spokesperson once famously declared that the concept of racism does not exist in Taiwan. At a recent Taiwan TV Awards, the chair of the judging committee refused to apologize for making ape noises while presenting an award to an indigenous group. <laughs> Collis recalls a similar attitude towards her own parents. They had to go different schools, only set up for savages. We are considered lower people who needed to be changed. Um, this affect our um, competence and identity for generations. I would call it a, like a trauma. President Tsai Ing-wen is the first female president and the first with indigenous whakapapa. Likewise, in 2020, Kolas, herself a former legislator, became the first female and first Indigenous spokesperson for the office of the president. Just two weeks ago, Kolas resigned, citing the president's support to run for governor in one of Taiwan's biggest regions. In terms of power sharing, how does that work for Indigenous Taiwanese? What sort of mechanism or model is in place to ensure that they participate in decision making. Like what you have in New Zealand, we do have some reserve seats for a member of parliament. And of course, any indigenous people can run for offices. Uh, since 2016, Taiwan's presidential office launched an indigenous truth and reconciliation commission hosted by the president herself. Each people's representative proposes to the president different ideas to improve the current situation of indigenous people. Every three months, we be able to talk to our president about our issue, our concern. China sees Taiwan as a breakaway province that needs to be reclaimed. Taiwan sees itself as an independent nation. Currently, only 13 countries, plus the Vatican, recognize Taiwan as such. Aotearoa New Zealand is not one. However, New Zealand backed Taiwan's observer status at the World Health Organization. That didn't go down well with China.
And then there are the free trade agreements. Now, China says it opposes Taiwan joining a major trans-Pacific trade deal just days after Beijing said it wanted to become a member of the same agreement. Add the United States into the mix and the South China Sea has long been a flashpoint, as Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern recently acknowledged. The rule of law is challenged in the South China Sea, where we've seen the construction of artificial islands, militarization, and actions that pose risks to the freedom of navigation and overflight, which are at odds with UNCLOS. With that tension between Taiwan and, and China, is there much chance for Indigenous people to put the case forward? Because that's a that's a huge tension, and and it reverberates globally. It's a very sensitive, isn't it? We are two different peoples. It's a reality. Some, uh, you know, pro-China politicians, they love to play with it. They're all mocking indigenous Taiwanese, like uh, calling us uh, using our blood to try to play political games. I totally disagree with that. So we are who we are. And don't brainwash indigenous Taiwanese that you are not indigenous, you are Han Chinese or the descendants of the Chinese. I think that's a little, uh, that's absurd. Sure, there is that DNA connection, but it is the shared experience of colonization and marginalization, which is much more powerful. I ask both women what they have learned from their many exchanges with Maori. For non-Maori people also learn Maori culture and language. Even though just in surface and level, you do the greeting, mm. you do a couple of a wayata, but that is really awesome, right? So in Taiwan, we don't do that. I learned that uh, we are not alone. That's the very important message I got years ago. I learned that we are fighting the same fight. We are fighting on each other's lands. And though the Pacific separates us, but we are not alone. We are family. No matter how much pressure there is, it is impossible to split us. And we are brothers and sisters.